Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. I'm answering questions from Google again. This time I tried to go down the scuba regulator route and answer questions about them, but trust the internet to go on a weird direction. So there is gonna be a vomit warning before the third question so that you can skip ahead uh, if you don't want to hear about that. But of course the, the basic questions are all lined up in the timeline uh, if you ever want to skip at any point, but let's jump straight into the first question. What are the stages of a scuba regulator? There are two stages to a regulator, but I understand why it can become quite confusing because we use the word stage to refer to a bunch of different things and equipment. For a regulator, the first stage is gonna be the metal bit that fits onto your cylinder valve. Uh, the first stage does most of the hard work. It takes the full cylinder pressure and then dials it down to a more reasonable pressure in some of the hoses coming out of it and full pressure to the one used for gauges. The second stage is basically anything that you breathe from, things with a mouthpiece. Most divers dive with two second stages, that's another place where some divers get confused, um, one to breathe from and one for emergencies, but they're both technically second stages, they're a demand valve. When you're buying regulators, sometimes you'll see stage three or stage four sets. Stage three usually includes the octo, and the stage four has the octo and a pressure gauge. It all depends on how you want to buy and build your regulators, but the first stage is the metal bit and the second stage is the demand valve that you breathe from. Do regulators come with hoses? Depending on how you buy them, yes or no. Um, the most common way to buy regulators does include the hoses and the first and second stage is usually connected by the manufacturer so that they can test them on a test bench before they put them in the box and then ship them off to your dive center. The last thing that the manufacturer wants is a bad experience as soon as you open them up. So they usually test the regulators before shipping to make sure that they work together. It's all a balancing act with regulators. They'll come with standard length hoses uh, and a for a single cylinder configuration, but you can buy the individual components if you want to. If you just want a first stage, you can go to your dive center and buy just a first stage as long as they hold it in stock. It can be quite rare depending on the dive center to have each individual component in stock because most dive centers will carry the classic first and second stage combinations, um, and then a matching octo that will go with it, because sometimes you can choose between the octos, and a, a range of gauges as well, that can all be assembled together for you. But for the most case, yes, they do come with hoses, but not always, so double check the listings. What happens if you vomit underwater? you suddenly become very popular with the local wildlife. Um, if you're squeamish about vomit, then you can skip ahead to this time code. Um, I'm not gonna show any videos or pictures or anything about it, but I, I am gonna be talking about it. Um, so yeah, skip ahead to that time code if you want to avoid it. So yes, you can throw up through your regulator. Second stages are pretty tough and the purge valve can usually take someone throwing up and just move on with its life without any issue. You don't even need to take the second stage out of your mouth. You can, you basically just need to exhale afterwards to make sure that the inside of the second stage is clear before you then inhale again. The fish are gonna love it because all of that food just floating around the water is just easy pickings for them um, to the point where it's kind of rumored that some photographers do it on purpose to try and attract some fish for their pictures and videos. But if you feel yourself about to throw up, don't panic, everything's gonna be okay. Just be ready to take your second stage out and flush it clean before putting it back in and purging it so that then you can breathe freely afterwards. You're gonna be fine. I've done it before where I swallowed a little bit of seawater by mistake and my stomach thought that was a bad idea. Um, it's just remain calm and collected. Y your body's gonna sort it out. Just remember you still got that purge button to clear everything out and then breathe from it or just swap to your octo. Can you sneeze while scuba diving? Yep, sneeze, cough, spit, do whatever you want 
well, within reason, while scuba diving, but I don't think I can ever recall sneezing during a dive or seeing another diver sneeze during a dive. Because your nose is covered up by your mask, it's quite rare for anything other than a little bit of water to go up your nose, and the air that we breathe is filtered heavily so no pollen or dust to tickle your nose when you're breathing so sneezing is fairly rare whilst diving if it were to happen i'd probably be ready to hold my mask and my second stage in place sneezing is quite a violent procedure and i wouldn't be surprised if it would dislodge my mask and maybe spit out my second stage i don't know it's never happened to me before but just like entering the water giant stride or roll back however you get into the water you hold on to your mask and your regulator, depending on how you were taught. I, I used to teach students to hold on to their mask and regulators with one hand so that they didn't go too far. But yeah, if you do feel a sneeze coming, um, yeah, just hold them in place and be ready to clear your mask of a little water just in case. Can I scuba dive with a vertigo? Vertigo is a funny thing, and some scuba diving can set off vertigo, but you can still go diving. Vertigo has a couple of meanings. Uh, most people think it's just fear of heights, but medically vertigo is an inner ear problem that makes you feel like everything's spinning even though you're not even moving. For the fear of heights, crystal clear water can start to pull on that thread. In some places, if you're diving well above, uh, you feel like you're flying high up above the seabed and looking straight down, you can see a long way down if the water's crystal clear. If you have that kind of vertigo, stick to shallower waters and try and stay near the bottom as well. Uh, there's no way that you can just uh, fall, but of course, that's no comfort if you have a, a real fear of heights. The flip side, uh, in murky waters where you can't see uh, anything, um, and in deeper waters as well where you can't see the bottom, with no fixed point of reference like the sea bottom, that can set some people off. Ear infections, uh, an imbalance in your inner ear, can trick your brain into thinking that you're moving when you're actually not. And some hoods as well can affect some divers if they're too tight or don't fit you properly. It does occur, but it is fairly rare. Your best option if you're worried about vertigo is to stick to brighter, shallower dives. Eat well, stay hydrated, make sure that you're equalizing early and often. And if you feel weird or start to feel weird, tell your buddy that there's something wrong with my ears uh, and try and focus on them as a fixed point of reference and, and then ascend. It, it's a horrible sensation, but in all of my dives, I think I've only ever experienced it once and it luckily went away quite quickly. It, it's quite rare, but if you do feel something happen, try and find that fixed point of reference and, uh, and to distract yourself with that. And if it does start to get worse, then of course, get out of the water. Once again, not the questions I expected to answer today, but valid questions that some divers do have. Uh, but if you have any burning questions, then do be sure to type the hashtag AskMark in your comment down below so that I can mention it on Friday's Ask Mark. And of course, take this time to do all the social media things and liking and subscribing the video, stuff like that. And of course, head over to our Instagram by searching for at SimplyScuba. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. And of course, safe diving. Thank you.